Great. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Mia and uh, today I'm going to give the Figma workshop here at Plab Lab. So we're going to learn all the basics uh, around Figma. So at the end of this workshop, if you have a design idea of an app, of a website, uh, you will be able to design your idea in Figma. So uh, just the agenda for today, um, just to give a little bit intro about the workshop, its goal and own goals, and a little bit about me why I'm qualified to do this. And then uh, I'll go over a brief overview of Figma and we'll start right away to work um, in Figma. We're gonna do some copy work. One of the best way to learn about a tool or to learn about design is to copy existing design. And the app that I've chosen is the BitKit that was uh, released recently by Synonym. And we're just gonna do the home screen together and with that you'll have a really good understanding of all the basic features uh, in Figma. And then if we have time, uh, I'm gonna let you do some, uh, the, some copy work on the Pleb Lab website, uh, a website that I designed, and I'm gonna let you do it on your own and I'll be walking around helping you out if ever you get stuck. And if we have time, I'm just gonna give you some tips and tricks regarding design. Um, Yes, it's great to learn about a tool, but if you don't understand some basic rules uh, about design, you will always feel that you're using the tool, um, that you're using the tool wrongly. Um, so that's why it's important to have a little bit of a design eyes. And at the end, I'll be sharing some resources that have helped me. Um, and I believe that will help you as well. And at the end, we'll, I'll open the floor to questions if there's something you will need to go over again. And that's it. So the goal of this workshop is to have a basic understanding of the different features in Figma. So if you have an idea, you'll be able to design it and also have a better understanding of what makes good design. Workshop known goals. Uh, at the end of this workshop, you won't be a Figma expert. You need a little bit of practice. And also I won't be teaching today how to use the tool in the most efficient way. Um, some designers always like to uh, improve the workflow by 1%. I, I think it's important to have the basics first and then <laughs> we'll see if uh, maybe another workshop um, to teach about that. And regarding prototyping, I'll show you the basics of prototyping, but um, if you want to prototype something, um, in my opinion, Figma is not the best tool out there. If you want to create something that is, seems really realistic to an app that will be developed, I would suggest another tool called Protopie, which is really focused on um, making really high fidelity prototype. However, if you just want to have an idea of, of how your app, the flow of a certain, how a certain flow of your app looks like, then yes, you can prototype in Figma, uh, no problem. So about me, um, I'm Mia, I'm a self-taught uh, designer and I freelance uh, currently. Some of my past and present clients, um, Bull Bitcoin, Galloway, Tablab, <laughs> stuff, right? Anyways, Alice, <laughs> thank you guys. Um, <laughs> so I've been walking a little bit around seeing what's <laughs> been done here. Um, I worked on mobile wallets, websites, website redesign, branding, uh, UX, UI. And if you want to follow me, um, here's my handle, Mia underscore white 21. Okay, um, I still want to get to know you, um, your name, your experience with design or experience with Figma, and also what you're looking to learn. I know it's a little bit late at this stage because I already like built my workshop, but if there's something um, that maybe I could provide during, during it, um, let me know and I will try to include it. So whoever wants to start. Uh, car, uh, experience with design, kind of a lot. Uh, just like mainly Adobe stuff. Uh, experience with Figma, just started using it this year, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm looking to learn is just like understanding like the, the little uh, quick, the quick kind of things you can do to, to like leap over the initial, like having to learn everything in order to learn how to use a, a tool. So that's what I'm looking for. Okay. I'm Toshi. Um, I've got a good bit of experience in design, but uh, no experience in Figma. So okay. I'd just like to learn how to uh, uh, start using the, the basic functionality of it. All right. Uh, John, no real experience with design. Uh, no 
creation side of Figma. I've had some uh, you know, people who've designed prototype screens and then say, here it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, when did, do you have experience with design or no? Sorry, I missed that. No. no. Okay. Good. Yes. Uh, Marcus, uh, a little bit of experience with design. I'm building my own app right now. We use Envision. Okay. Um, I really just kind of want to learn uh, what Figma does and their tools and whatnot. Uh, really a plan, so um, I know kind of like how the tools work, but I just like to know um, this implementation of Figma. All right. Cool. Awesome. Well, it seems I built my workshop the right way. <laughs> Good. Um, all right. Uh, let's now have a tour uh, around Figma. Uh, if you don't have an account in Figma, please create one because we'll be playing in it. Um, does everyone has an account? Yeah? OK. Awesome. Um, I'll be switching over here then. So the way that... Um, Figma described themselves as the collaborative interface design tool, so that it's a, at its core, it's a tool made to design user interface and to do prototyping, uh, which I feel it's really what describes uh, what uh, Figma is. So if I just go back to my files, um, here you will have, I mean, for me it's a bit filled out because I have multiple projects, but maybe for you, you just have like one team and that will be yourself. So when you create an account with Figma, uh, you have access maybe to three free projects or something like that, and you have access to one team, which is yourself. So my team here will be here. And all the other teams here is this client who have invited me uh, for that. And once um, you are in a team, you can have like different projects, uh, for example, here that I started. And if I go to one project, then I can have multiple design file in that projects. Uh, there's two things, you have the new design file, which is um, uh, this year I use mainly for designing and prototyping, but also there's a feature in Figma called FigJam. And if I click on here, here it's, mostly done, it's mostly used for brainstorming, uh, floor chart, and this is where often like teams will go in here to let's say find a new idea or trying to solve a, a specific problem. So I won't cover that today, but just so you know, um, that exists there too. All right, uh, I, will, I would want you guys to create a new design file. Um, so you just click here and it will create a new one. And then choose a blank canvas? Uh, yeah, so just uh, empty. And after that, I'll I'll share you a, a link with you guys so you copy some of the assets that you need to be able to uh, jump into it. Okay. Um, so how could I share a link? Does every one of you have access to the PlubLab Slack? Uh, no. Okay, I just would wanna... Can we make it a tiny URL? Yeah, I just want to share a, a URL. You can uh, tiny URL it and just use your code. Um, no, I won't be able for a tiny URL. Or you can just share it to the Slack at Bubba, and then I can share it to him. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's okay. Um, here you go. Can we make a copy? 
so what you no, you should make a copy. So what I would suggest is um, you select these three images by uh, dragging with your mouse, mm -hmm. and then if you press Shift and click on Assets, the Assets frame, and then you do yeah. Command C, and you copy paste on your Figma, then you'll be able to follow me. Yeah. Move it over to the blank canvas over yeah, here. your blank canvas that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, does everybody have it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, also, another thing that I want you guys to check is um, if you just click one frame like here, um, I want you to see if you have the font uh, inter in your in your Figma. Sorry. So if you want to see a font, you just if you press T and then drag a text box and you write in it, then the text um, the text um, how panel should open and you'll be able to see if you have like the font entire. Okay, let's go ahead and download it, but it's good. Yeah. Yeah, you click on the install font. Yeah, and if you don't have it, then just click the link on my file and it will lead you to Google Fonts for, for you to install it. Uh, yeah, uh, but I would suggest a font that is not serif. So something if you have Roboto, use something like that, Helvetica. or Helvetica, Open Sans. There's a bunch of default fonts. Yeah, the BitKit app. Um, the font that I use, I don't think it's the font that they use, but it's just the, the copy work that I've done, so yeah. Okay. You're okay, John? Uh, yeah, I'll just skip it and I'll just use something else. Okay. Do you have at least like OpenSun or Helvetica or something like that? Okay, awesome, good. All right, so you guys have copied these assets on your Figma file, and so you're just gonna follow me basically what I say uh, to do this. So just to explain what I've done, uh, first, in order to do this copy work, I just remove this. Um, so I've, ta I've taken a screenshot of, of the home screen of the BitKit app, and I've resized them to have a width of 320. The reason why I have this width is to help me, uh, so it fits um, some of the most common like frame sizes. And my phone is a iPhone like five, so that's why I chose um, this one. So uh, just before we jump into design, just to give you an overview of this panel here. 
So on the left side, you have um, the pages here. You can create multiple pages, and then you can jump from one file, uh, from one page to the other uh, with that. You can also rename them, delete them if you want to. Um, once you are uh, in a page, you have just below here, uh, basically the layers panel. So sometimes you will go in there if you need something like in the front or in the back, and um, or just and if you want to be more precise, sometimes you don't want to bring everything in the front or in the back. And then at the top here, uh, you have one of the very, very basic features. So um, here, the move tool, which if I press V, then you have like um, the black cursor. Uh, just next to it, you have a frame. If you press F, you have frame. And then on the right side, you have all the different frames that sort of exist in this world. Um, of course, there's maybe some that are missing, but they are the most common one. So what I want you to, uh, to do, guys, is uh, select the frame iPhone SE, and a frame should appear on your uh, canvas. So now we have um, this frame. And then um, all the other tools here, you have like the shape tool, which we'll uh, go into, and then the pen tool, which is something similar to the Adobe Suite, like if you do an Illustrator. And then if you, you have the text, we will go. And most of our time, we will spend on this uh, right side panel, on the design panel, where you have um, the, this frame uh, panel, which you can change the position or make the frame wider or that kind of stuff. And then I'll go into auto layout, layout grid, fill stroke effects. Um, basically, all the same similar feature that um, Illustrator will have some sort, but a bit re rearranged in a different way. And then you have the prototype panel, uh, which what uh, basically does, I'm just going to do some quick prototyping here. So here, the prototype panel, if I click here, is I can start a flow starting point. And then um, let's say I create uh, a quick button here. and. I click this button and I uh, click interaction. And then I choose um, to drag the prototype to this other screen. And then it would give me all the other options, what I want to do. Do I want it the instant? Do I want to dissolve it? Um, and all that. And that will be some of uh, the basic prototyping things. So just to show you like quickly at the end. Um, just sorry, it takes time to load. So if I click, then it will appear something else. Um, I won't go deep into that, but we will do some a little bit um, in the in um, in the copy work that we'll be doing. And then, uh, how, and also you have another panel which is inspect, that can be useful for developers. Um, let's say you click. Um, here, if I go here, the copy work that I've done previously to prepare myself for this workshop. If I click here, then uh, they have an idea, OK, what's the border, the, what's the position, the width, height. And that could be uh, useful for CSS if developers just want to copy and not think too much about it. So um, an interesting uh, panel for that. OK, so let's start um, designing a for real now. So um, let's um, analyze a little bit um, the, the home screen. So we see at the top, we have like your name, some icons here and there. And then we have the total balance, another icon, some images here. Um, and then here the image is a bit cut because it's a long screen that scrolls. So it scrolls and we have the asset section, the widget, activity, and a rectangle that I mentioned that BitKit is a beta software. And just here, we have also this um, where we can send and receive. But also, you notice that it's not totally like it's not opacity. It's a, some sort of a blur. So we will do that um, as well. OK. Um, so at the end, what we're going to have, it's something that looks a little bit like this. So you can scroll, and you see like at the top, 
it doesn't scroll with it, it stays there, and you can horizontal scroll like this. So this is what we're gonna do. All right, okay, let's start then. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move these images uh, just on the side and just have this top screen next to it so I can um, check this, the sizing and all that. So at the top, we have this center, some sort of circle where people can put their profile uh, pictures. So if you want to zoom in, you can just press Z, and with your mouse, you'll be able to zoom in. And then what I'm going to do is press O, and then I'm going to press Shift Option, and I'm going to drag a circle, and it and I will place my cursor like in the middle of it. Okay. And now I'm going to transfer this um, just here. Uh, also another thing that I'm going to do right away is usually on phones you have a little bit like of padding on the side, like a, a, some sort of margin. So I just want to show my rulers and I'm going to do a shift R and then I'm going to drag a ruler here and I'll put it like at 16 pixel and I'll have the number red at the top. And then um, 320 minus 16, that will be 304. And then I'll do the same thing here on the other side. And if you put your mouse here, it won't give you the position of the frame. So you really have to push your cursor here and it will give you the position in the frame Okay, at 304, I put it there. So that way I know I cannot go like, um, I cannot go beyond this, except of course the scrolling part here, which will be the exception uh, since it's gonna scroll. And then I'll just put like my circle here um, next to it, because uh, it's uh, closest to the edge. And now I have, um, also um, I have your name here, that will probably be around like 16 or 18 pixels. So what I would do is I would press T, um, drag a text box here, and then I will go on the text panel and I will um, change the font size to 16. And then I will type um, Satoshi Nakamoto uh, just to have an example of a name. Now, as you can see, my box is like all over the place, right? Like it doesn't fit um, the word properly. So how you can adjust that is go here uh, on the panel and use all the width, and then the text box will fit the word properly and it will make into one line. If, for example, you take the text box and you drag it in, you see it will be like on two lines here. So oftentimes when people are newbies in Figma and try like to design something quick, they don't, they don't understand how to figure out this text box thing. So if you wanna fix height and width for the text box, then stay here on the fixed size. But if we wanna adapt, so it just, uh, the heights um, adapt to what you're typing, then auto height. But if you want a text box to fit neatly here, then max width would be what I suggest. Is everybody following me? Like, if I go too fast, let me know. I'm just, um, I just want to make sure that <laughs> you're you're able to design at the same time that I'm doing it. Yes. Uh, what was the sizing for the box, the text box? Um, I wouldn't matter the size; it's more the font size that I would look. So I would try like 16 for the font size, and then if you just press all the width, it should adapt itself to it. And then, uh, okay. All right, and then we can see that the font that I'm using, the weight, whether it's like bold, um, is so the weight that I use is bold, and it's a little bit too thick compared to what I have here. So I would go probably with semi-bold would be a fair uh, assumption. And then I will go, if I press with my mouse here, and press option against, and press option, and then I over my, mouse over the circle, you see a number appear between the two, and that will tell me what's the spacing between them. Usually in, um, in UI, you want to have a spacing that is always like a multiple of four, 
So 4, 8, um, 16, um, and all that continuing. All right. If I raise your hand, if there's um, something that is unclear. Okay, now we see there's um, this, these icons here over here. And for sake of simplicity, I gave you guys already the icons there, but they are not properly sized or colored. So we're gonna uh, fix that right away. Uh, for the icons, just to give you tips, there's a lot of icon libraries out there that you can like copy and paste into Figma and they either will give you the icon in format of SVG or PNG. Um, I would suggest you always copy your icon in the format SVG because then you can modify them, and um, which probably you already know, but um, just to <laughs> make it clear. So what I would do is I will select that user icon and that cog icon. Um, and for the sake here to copy things, I would press option. And then you see uh, my mouse has two um, my cursor has like two arrows and with that I'll be able to copy and have them here and now I'm just gonna move them um, just here and obviously they are uh, way too big so what I'm gonna do is uh, move it like uh, I'll change the color first actually I'm gonna go down in the panel stroke and then I'm gonna just put white so um, in the top left corner, and then I'll be able with the picture here, um, put them um, closer here. So usually um, this icon is maybe like 24 maybe, um, no, it's definitely smaller, um, 20. In order to scale it so it scales equally on all sides, I would press K and then um, then I will be able to scale it um, down. Now it's probably, and if I go over, it's, um, it's similar. So also another th trick I do when I do copy work is uh, playing with the op opacity of things that I'm copying. So for example, the icon here, if I press three quickly, the opacity of the icon will go to 30%. And then when I press like over it, I can have a better idea if it sort of like fits. It's a bit too big still, so I probably would put it at 18 pixel instead. Um, and then it would probably fit like this. So I will pull it, um, I will bring the opacity back to 100 and then I'll be able to put it here. Now, as you can see, um, <laughs> of course I put it white and my frame is white. Um, and that will be hard uh, to work with. So what I'm gonna do is change the color of this frame. So I'm gonna press um, the frame iPhone, and if I press I on the computer, I have the color picker that um, is available to me. So you just press uh, whatever color you wanna copy, uh, I'll press uh, on that screen, and then my frame is gonna become uh, totally black. And then I'm gonna change just the font of, uh, the f color font of this one. So bring it to white and that way, and I'll bring my other icon uh, to white already so we can see uh, what did I... You, how did you get the whole thing black again? Yeah. So uh, basically you press the frame that you want to be black. You press I on your key uh, keyboard and with the color picker, you press on the picture of the screen. All right, and then we'll do the same um, resizing thing for the icon. Since for this one we said it's 18, um, this one will be uh, 18 as well. And I'll put it also completely on the side where my ruler is, and this one I'll move it here. And I'll check the positioning as well uh, by clicking the icon and then over in my mouse on the other object. And now I see it's 10 pixel, I just move it two pixel um, next to it. All right. Um, another thing that I wanna do first is, if you see like in the app, there's a few colors that always come back. 
And instead of always entering the code of the color, we can create some style here. And the styles here are things that you can reuse all throughout the app, um, all throughout your design, uh, because you know the colors will be the same. Um, it's also a thing that you would uh, use when creating like theme and components for developers. That way they also know, oh, they, it's always these colors that we're using and you can have what you have uh, coded is the same thing that you have in Figma. So in order to create these styles, um, I've already pulled out the grays that there is in this design for you guys. So what I want to do is just to create those styles. And how you do this is uh, you press the first uh, rectangle. You can click X on the scale panel. You don't need it for now. And then uh, under fill, um, you're going to press the four uh, little dots here and press the plus to create a style. And now you can name uh, the color. Um, the way I've named them is one, two, three, four, one being the lightest and seven being the darkest. Um, the naming here is not so important because it's so simple what we're doing, but usually I would use like 100, 200, 300 um, to fit what um, the developers are, are coding usually. So please do that for all the colors, yes. Uh, yes, so you click a rectangle that has a color that already put, and then the four dots here, and then you click the plus sign, create style, and now you can name your color, and when you click create style, it will create one. Yeah. And just let me know when you guys have done all of this for the seven colors. All good? Okay, all right. Let's um, continue. So we have total balance here. So I'm gonna press T, um, create a text box, and then I'm gonna write in it total, um, total balance. As you can see, the text here is all caps. So in order to make it all caps without me have to block my caps lock, what I'm gonna do is press Command A so it's gonna select everything that is in my text box. And then I'm gonna go here in the three dots, the type settings. So under the text panel. And here I'll have all the different ways how to style my text. Um, in this case, I want it to be uppercase. So I'm gonna click here, um, uppercase. And my whole text is gonna be, is gonna be transformed uh, uppercase. Now, um, as you can see, my text box is a little bit Weird, so I'm just gonna click like auto width so I have everything like in one line. 
and obviously it's bigger than it should so I'm going to decrease the font size to probably 10 and it should be approximately the same size. Now the color is not um, white, uh, it's gray. So I will look at the grays and I think it probably would be this grade three. So I'm gonna click on the style grade three and um, it will change the color of my font. Now we're gonna, if you don't stop me, I'll continue, okay? So please stop me. <laughs> And now, um, just below it, there's the lightning here. So for the lightning um, icon, I, don't, I didn't have the exact one, so I'm gonna recreate it based off on one icon that I have here. So I'm gonna take this one, press Option, copy it, and then I'll bring it um, just next to it. In order to make my life easier, I'll, I'll already switch the color to a gray, so I'll go again in my color styles and I put probably grade three uh, for the, the outline. I'm gonna also like fill it because it's like on it's filled, oops. So as you can see, when I clicked filled, it filled the whole box, we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go into the layers, opening my lightning um, box, select vector here, uh, remove the field because I don't need it and I'm also going to remove the outline because I don't need it and then I'm going to go select the vector instead and then I'll be able to change the style and then click uh, on grade 3 to have it filled um, the, like uh, this. What was the outline that you removed from, from the vector? I saw the, uh, the fill but where did you choose? So you usually will have like a stroke available and then you just uh, oh, press okay. minus here. Okay, so now that I have um, this color, uh, I'm gonna just remove the opacity a little bit um, to see, and then I'm gonna, I press four for the opacity, and then I'm gonna put it like um, on top of it. If you wanna zoom in, just press Z and the plus will appear. If you wanna zoom out, it's uh, Z and option, and if you press it, you'll be able to zoom out. So if you're just wondering how I do that when I go back and forth. Now, as you can see, like the lines are not fitting perfectly. So in order to um, adjust this, I will click on vector and then press enter. Um, and then you see the lines are available to me to adjust. So I'll go with my mouse and I'll adjust so it fits um, how the current icon is being designed and I'll put it like on top of it like this and then I can press enter again to make it done um, there's just some things here that I want to adjust here and then I bring back the opacity to a hundred back pressing zero so after you selected it in vector where do you go to after that uh, after that I press enter on my keyboard and then you should have these little bullets available to you and then you can adjust the sizing with your cursor. And once you're done, you can press enter again. Okay. Um, the color that I put, I just realized is like too dark. So I just switched to, um, I, by selecting the vector, I just switched to grade two instead. And same thing for the, uh, 
the stroke too for them. It's not like perfect, but uh, we'll do it. Pardon. We'll do it um, this way. Okay. And now we have um, the zero that just next to it. So I just press T, create a text box, and type zero um, in it. And then I'm gonna select it, so Command A, and I'm gonna go change the size to something like probably 36. It seems pretty fair. And then I'll change the text box size by clicking on the width and then I'll just put it like next to it here. What was the size of the video? 36. All right. And then um, I'll go below and uh, type, um, uh, we see we have like those suggestions um, box so what I'm gonna do is uh, basically take the font here, press option, copy um, and paste, and then I'm gonna type like suggestions here. As you can see, it's all capped, so I'm just gonna press command A, um, remove the all caps before, and then I'm gonna increase the font size to 16 and change the color to gray one. Like that. And now we're gonna do the images here. So I'm gonna take the image of the, uh, not the case, but how do you call it, the safe? The images of the safe, and I'm gonna reduce it. To, in order to reduce it equally on, equal, equally on all side, I'll press K, and then I'll go with my cursor and reduce it. Now I wanna make sure that the size of the, of the, <laughs> what's the other, the, the safe, thank you, <laughs> sorry, English being third language, sometimes it's tricky. <laughs> um, and then I'm just gonna put it above and try to, to make sure that it's sort of like the same size. Um, all around it. Um, as you can see, like the 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 image uh, overall is quite like bigger than um, what I have right now. So what I'm gonna do is if I press Command and then I over over my mouse and I drag down, I can reduce like basically um, the size of the image. And uh, one thing to notice though is I want to make sure that um, my the overall image is equally like on all sides. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to show you a better way to do it. Um, so I'm just going to remove what I did. Okay. I'm just going to reduce the image to the max actually so that the um, frame of the image is almost like the same size as the safe. So if I press K, it will scale like my image, uh, basically like this. And I want something approximately like that. I might need it a little bit bigger. And now I need to make the safe be uh, bigger though. So what I'm gonna do is click on the image, go on fill and click image here. And then um, I'm gonna click on crop. And as you can see, I have all the different, I mean, the different like crop things <laughs> that I can crop my image. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna over my mouse over the image, uh, move it, and then by pressing K, um, sorry, move it, and then by, sorry, by pressing Shift, I'll be able to increase actually my image, but still have, I still have an idea like how big the frame of my image is. And then I press enter. Were you able to do this? Yeah, okay, awesome. And now uh, we have 
below what's written, uh, back up and store uh, your money. Um, as you can see, if you look at like suggestion, um, backup, assets, and Bitcoin here, they all sort of seem the same font size. So it's sort of worth it to make a style out of it. So as the same as the color style, what I'm gonna do is click on um, the font that I wanna make a style of, and then um, I'm gonna click on the four dots here, style, I'm going to click add style, create style here, and then I'm going to name um, that style. Let's name it, um, let's name it like 14 pixel semi bold because this is what it is at the moment. And then um, I create style and then it will appear. So when I create the text box, by pressing T and then um, dragging the text box and typing back up and then selecting command A to select and then I'm gonna change the color to white. Then my backup text is already uh, 14 pixel and semi bold. And then I'm just gonna change the, uh, text, um, the text box size by clicking here and clicking um, auto width. Should I repeat that? So it just like speeds things up for you faster? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, for now I'm gonna keep it here um, just so I have a reference for the size above it. Okay, um, and now we have the um, close icon here. So what I'm gonna do is copy this close icon option paste and then um, I'm gonna resize it pressing K scaling it um, should be 14 pixels seems about right and then I'm gonna change the color of it to go to again the trick you go in inside of it selecting both the vectors that you're doing the X and then changing the stroke line to be grade 2 and it should be fairly uh, accurate to that and then I'm gonna put it here on top mm, maybe it's a little bit light so grade 3 I'll put it the grade 3 um, now I have the other text like below um, store your money so I'm gonna press T create a text box type store your money come an A to select everything and then um, I'm gonna detach, you see like it's already like 14 pixels semi-bold, so I'm gonna detach the style so I can modify um, the size of it and I'll probably put it at 12 pixels, should, not too big, so 10 would be good and then changing uh, to auto width to have like this. Uh, the color is obviously not right, so we'll change it to gray three. And then if I go like above it, seems the right size. Okay, so now um, at the end of, of this, you should have something that um, looks like this. And you see, we didn't um, group them together yet. Um, so we're gonna do that, but you have like two ways to group things in Figma. You have auto layout or you have just group. What I prefer to use is auto layout because with auto layout you can uh, add things to your group and it will, it will keep the same spacing uh, everywhere depending how you set up. So what I'm gonna do is uh, basically um, select backup and store money and then click shift A and I have created an auto layout and your objects would be like in a frame. However, it will activate this panel, the auto layout panel. And what you can do is you can position your element in auto layout, so it can, they could be center, they could be uh, right aligned. Uh, for us, we're gonna just put it right aligned. And you can change also the spacing between the items here. So if I put just my cursor above it and just drag my mouse on the left and right, I can change this. I can even go on the auto layout and change it manual, manually here um, and see the numbers uh, while I do that. 
but for now we'll keep it at zero because um, the spacing is enough uh, for this one. And um, I'm going to also group um, my text with the image like this. And uh, we have also the cursor, um, not the cursor, the close. So I'm going to group uh, this group uh, with the close by pressing Shift A again. Now, as you can see, it's totally like on the center because right now it's in the center like this. But if I put it up, it will go up here. All right. Um, now, as you can see, also like this um, image has a little bit like of padding on the on all sides. So in order to do that, I'll go into my auto layout panel and press. Um, 16. Probably it's a bit too much actually. I'm going to press 8, so have uh, padding on both sides and then padding on the top here. And then you see the color of this rectangle is not, um, is not transparent. So what I'm going to do is click on the frame, click fill, and then I'm going to click color here. And then what I'm going to do is change my, the type of field that I have. So I have solid, linear, radial, angular. And if we look at um, the way that the gradient is made, it's lighter on the left side and darker on the right side. So, and it doesn't come from a circle, right? It's, it seems to be just like a line. So it will be the gradient uh, linear and the gradient will appear like this on default, like from, from the top to the bottom. What I'm gonna do though is, we see the gradient goes, goes from left to right. So I'm gonna take with my mouse and put it approximately like in the middle here. Usually you have your guides already that will tell you that it's in the middle and I'll put it like this here. Now I wanna change the colors on my gradient. So I click here, um, I can press, um, I for the color picker and I'm go, gonna go choose the uh, lightest blue, so right here. Oh, wow. And then um, <coughs> I'm gonna, so for to finish the gradient, um, I'm gonna select the end of the gradient just here. And as you can see, it goes to tra transparent, but um, here my gradient is not transparent, or at least it's one way I, I can do it. So I'm going to bring the opacity to 100% first. So I can see, um, I'm just going to bring it like this. And then again, with the color picker, press an I, choose it here. And then I have um, the darkest, like blue shades that should be good. And now I've made a gradient that is very similar to what has been done here. Uh, we see also the corners are, are really round for that. So I'm going to select my frame and then I'm going to um, um, change the corner radius by going here and then pressing 8 probably should be more. Let's say 12. That should be fairly uh, accurate. All right. Now, one last thing, we see things are not quite positioned the way that they should be. Um, it's a little bit like off in terms like of padding and all that. So what probably I'm gonna do is first like remove the spacing between um, those two objects. So I'm gonna put it like to zero by clicking in the frame. Um, probably there's a little bit of spacing, so let's say four. And um, I'm gonna go above here and I'm gonna make sure that the elements in my frame are, no, like this, yeah, should be fine. And then um, what I'm gonna do is, right now, like the size of the frame, it always hugs the contact, meaning like it, it respects the padding that I've put. So if my image is really big, but I have like a padding of eight, then the frame's gonna adjust to the big image while respecting the padding uh, on it. But sometimes um, you wanna cheat and you can do like fixed sizes instead. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put like the frame above it 
on the corner like that and with my mouse cursor I just adjust um, the size of things to make it like sort of equal. Now it's a little bit like off so I'm gonna put a little bit more piling on the top and the bottom so 12 should be something fair and I can also still put more padding on on left and right so 12 something like this seems pretty good oh and I can definitely add more here because there's definitely more that should be f yeah for might be here a little bit more above it but either way so we should be fine and now you do the same thing for the other boxes you don't need to go through all the steps that I've done but the first box is necessary because you have to build it from scratch but um, you can just press an option copy and then you just go in there replacing the image and the copy and the colors with the ways that I've showed you so do you guys want to tackle that and I'll be walking around if you need help or showing again yeah uh, can you rebuild the backup box yes okay um, so I'm gonna press T to have a text box and I'm gonna right back up. Now the style is not um, the right one, so I'm going to go in my text style um, and press um, 14 pixel semi bold and I'm going to press white here. Now I need a uh, store your money, so I'm going to copy the text box, write store your money I'm gonna detach the style, click it auto width, and um, press um, 12, and click 12 here. Press medium, and then I'm gonna change the color to something like gray three should be, um, should be good. And I change um, the, sorry again, the font size to 10. and should have something like this. Now um, I'm gonna change also the font weight to be semi-bold instead. Okay, whoops, no. Um, then I wanted the image um, of the safe to be the same, so I'm just gonna copy paste the image of the safe here. <coughs> and then um, I'm gonna press K resize the image. So I want the, my image to be like the same size as the safe. But as you can see, there's a lot like of white space around it. So I just wanna reduce at least like the size of the image to be sort of the same as the safe. And then uh, I'm gonna increase the size of the safe by clicking like image uh, changing to crop, then I'll be able to move my image and then by pressing shift I'll be, um, just be careful, by pressing shift I'll be able to increase the image like this. How'd you get to a crop? Uh, how I get to a crop? You click uh, image here and then you click here, now you're probably on fill but you have the other option of crop and you're able to crop it. Um, I realize I may have crop it. Okay. Now I have the image the right size. Then I'll go for the close 
icon. I just copy paste in it. Um, I'll change it to a size of 14 by pressing K. Then changing the color to gray three. This now I have this line around my box um, of the icon. I'm just gonna go into the layers, removing the outline in in the rectangle by clicking here. And yeah. Um, so you want to remove the stroke. So if you click like vector, you have like the stroke panel, and then you have a minus next to the color stroke. Oh, okay. You just remove it here. All right, I'll continue and then I want to group the copy first. So I'm going to select them and then click Shift A to create an auto layout. And then I want to auto layout, I want to create another group but now with the image because there's a little bit of spacing between the image and store your money. Um, and I'll adjust the spacing to be eight here. Again, Shift A for auto layout. And then I want to group the save and the copy with the close icon uh, and then do Shift A again. And um, now I have no spacing, but um, that's fine. Now my box is has no color on it, right? So we want to add the color on it. So what I'm going to do is select uh, my frame and click fill and automatically a white fill will appear the fill that we want to have is a gradient that go that is horizontal so we're going to click um, the color here and then we're going to change the fill to linear because it's a linear gradient that we have here and now my gradient is like from top to bottom I want my gradient to be left to right so I'm going to choose the my gradient and center it to my box here like that so I have a gradient from left to right and then I'm gonna choose the you see it's a light blue uh, I mean it's not so light but it's a lighter blue we press I and then I'm gonna try to select the most lightest blue that I have and now I have the lightest blue here and then I'm gonna have to finish the end of my other gradient and so I press the end of the other gradient, um, augment the opacity to 100. And again, by pressing I, I'm go to the darkest blue and I change here. And um, now I have my fill that is full here. It's, is it Marcus, your name? Yeah, is it all good, Marcus? Yes. Awesome, great. And now we're gonna um, adjust, do you have like already the full box? Yeah, the blue full box. Okay, and is it already like the right size and all that, or? Uh, it's, you, it's just not rounded. 
Oh, okay, perfect. So if you want to round it, you just go, you select your box and um, you go in the frame panel just here and you have like border radius and you can change it to 12 should be good. Should be fairly the same. Yeah. All right. Okay, um, now that we have our first box, we need to make all the others. So in order to do that is I'm gonna copy the, my first box, so pressing Option and then dragging, so I have another box. And I'm gonna do the same for um, all of them. So, and then I'm just gonna press um, Command D to have the two others. Now I'm going to go in them and um, change basically the color and the image. So for, for me, you know, if to be like easier when I change the image, I usually um, go here, image, then um, and then I'll choose an image in my files. And then I'll change the image here. So for Pleb Lab, uh, workshop, image to be used. So that's one way um, to change the image. But for you guys, since um, you didn't have the assets before, you can just copy paste the images and then resize them the way I've showed you and you should be able to um, put the image in. One thing about putting the image in is um, you have an auto layout. So if you start on the first auto layout, you see it will put like the image randomly in a place you don't want to necessarily want to. So what you have to do, you have to go into the layers and then um, change your image at the right place. So you have here a bitkit safe, and this is the image bitkit Ellen. I want bitkit. I want uh, Bitkit Ellen to replace the safe. So I'm going to click on Bitkit Ellen and then move it in my frame. And now it goes one on top of the other because my auto layout was set up this way. So I'm just going to remove like Bitkit safe and then I have the image uh, placed at the right place. And then I just need to resize it the way that I've done it for the safe as well. So I'm going to let you guys change the the color and the images for that with what I've showed. And if ever you get stuck, um, just let me know and I'll go to your desk. And once you're, you're done, um, tell me. So the, the next one was the, so the safe, the lightning bolt, and then it's a shield, and then the crown, the, the assets? Uh, yeah, there? so the other was a safe, a lightning bolt, the shield, and a crown.
Um, one thing you guys might notice when uh, doing all the other um, images is that the font of um, the, the title of the little squares is uh, too big. Um, just realize with better security. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach, detach the style and actually put it at 12 uh, pixel instead for everybody. And if you want to copy um, the style to one other element, you can just press Option, Command, C. And then if you press, um, let's say, Paint Instantly, Option, Command, V, it will copy the style on it automatically instead of you having to play in it. Have a good day. Have you guys all completed the four little images? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I realize I may have been ambitious with the design I've chosen, but. Yeah. It's good to know, like, <laughs> from start to finish, you can do this. Yeah. I didn't realize it was um, not this easy, but like this uh, reachable. Like as far as like you can go in there, pick a design that you like, and then go and recreate it. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Definitely feels like features that. Yeah. Right? So it's cool that there's like a layout functionality and photo editing functionality. Like you can change the exposure and. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Same it's definitely uh, not as advanced as Photoshop, but there's little things I can do here and there. Okay. So, all right. Um, 
I'll continue and um, next time when I give another workshop, I'll start with something maybe easier. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that way I know now. All right, and then I'm gonna create, um, so as you can see here um, in the app, um, these cars are scrollable horizontally. So in order to do that is I want to group all these cards together uh, with an auto layout because it gives me a frame. And when I have a frame, I can animate it and I can put a horizontal scrolling on it. So I'm going to select all these cards together, um, click Shift A, and then I'm going to adjust the spacing between them by going in my auto layout panel. And I'm going to change it probably to something like eight um seems seems fair and then i'm going to put this um, frame here into my um, screen that i have designed and that is as you can see if it's in the frame uh, you won't be able to see um, the other parts um, it will cut basically because it's inside the frame like that i'm just going to just make sure the spacing is 16 should be probably right. And now if I um, select my entire frame and click uh, present here, it will appear as a prototype here. If you don't have the phone screen, that's, that's normal. Um, I just, uh, we can edit that later. It's not important right at the moment. And now, um, as you can see, I cannot horizontal uh, scroll it. So what I'm going to do is select my frame. Um, then by pressing command, I'm going to reduce my frame size. So it, it's closer to the edge. Uh, I mean, it's on the edge. And then I'm going to click prototype. And then um, under overflow scrolling, I'm going to choose horizontal scrolling. And now if I refresh my prototype, um, it should add that horizontal scrolling. Like that. And that way I animated my prototype. All right. Um, now let's um, continue. I'm just going to go back on my design panel by clicking design and I'm going to finish. Um, I'm going to add these uh, rows here that I have. Um, I'm, as you can see, I'm just going to remove that so you can see. So I have like the assets, the widget and the activity. And for these three things, it all should be approximately the same the way we do it. So I'm just going to uh, increase the height of my frame. So on my iPhone frame, so I'm going to select the frame, um, press in command, and then drag the bottom so I have uh, more space. And now I'm just going to copy paste the assets. So option, suggestions, uh, option, copy suggestions. And then I'm going to type assets. And I'm going to do the first row and like that will just copy paste so it's quicker to do the other ones. So I have this icon, the Bitcoin icon here. So I'm going to copy paste the icon option to copy and then just uh, drag it um, to your frame. And now I want, I want it to be orange, right? So I'm going to press I for the color picker while uh, my icon is selected, go on the orange. Oh, again, I made the same mistake. So go in your frame and then click the uh, icon here. And then with the color picker, you'll be able to do it. Um, now, as you can see, though, the icon, the way they've done the icon is it's a white Bitcoin and on a on an orange coin. And for for mine is like cut some somehow. Um, what I'm, that is because we have the subtract um, in the icons. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to click subscribe. Subs in order to have the white one, I just need to remove the subtract. So I'm going to click on the subtract, right click, and then I'm going to ungroup. 
and that should remove the subtract at all and you have just only so you have two things you have the bitcoin symbol and you have the coin so i'm going to select the coin and then i'm going to choose the color orange again and then i'm selecting the bitcoin symbol and i'm gonna make it uh, white and then i have my icon here now the sizing is not like perfect regarding the icon but then you would just need like to reduce the b and it should be like fairly the same but for the sake um, of quickness um, i want you'll be able to to know how to do it, so I want to show it to you now. Um, and then, beautiful logo, that's a good logo, Teddy. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna copy and write like Bitcoin because we have Bitcoin. I'm gonna put zero zero. Uh, actually, no, just zero because on the original there's nothing. Um, push it like to the edge completely. And then just making sure everything is aligned perfectly. And then I'm gonna bring this just closer. Um, one way if you wanna move things, um, if you press Alt, you if you press Option, sorry, you have the numbers, but if you don't wanna press like to go pixel by pixel by pixel, if you just press Shift, it will jump 10. So this way it's just easier to to resize things and now I have uh, the BTC and it seems approximately the same size as total balance here at the top so I'm just gonna copy total balance bring it at the bottom and write BTC all right and then um, the same they seem to be the same size here and there so I'm just gonna copy paste again and I'm gonna write um, zero dollars because the equivalent and then again pushing it like to the edge like this where my ruler is all right now what I'm gonna do is I want to group these things together um, there's one last thing is regarding there's a like slight line here so that it separates the different um, rows. So in order to do that, I'm gonna press L, so I have the line function, and then I'm gonna go where my ruler is, start the line here, and then drag um, here next, next to my other ruler. Now, as you can see, it can be hard like to know, like to make my rule straight. So in order to make it straight, you just press Shift and it will straighten out for you. And then you just release and it's done. Whoops, I just released at the wrong time. So um, here you go. And then I'm gonna click on the line that I created, go under stroke and change the color and change it to um, probably grade three. Oh no, that's way too uh, visible. Um, grade five. Try it again. <laughs> Great, yeah, gray six is right. It's almost not visible, but yeah. Okay, and now I'm gonna group things together. So uh, let me see how the other ones are, just to group this properly. Okay, all right, so we're gonna group these things together. So I select them by pressing shift and I shift A, so they are together. And then I'm gonna select BTC and Bitcoin, again, holding shift and click on the other, pressing together. Um, now there's like four pixel of space in mine. So I'm just gonna adjust that and remove the spacing because there's no need. And I'm gonna do the same here, making sure there's no space between them and then um, I'm gonna select the Bitcoin coin and Bitcoin text shift a again and now it's a space of eight pixel I think it's fair and after that I'm gonna select 
um, these two, grouping them again, um, clicking Shift A, and they will be grouped. One last thing I want to do is group the line with the text here, Shift A again, and the spacing here, it's 20, I'm going to put it at 16. And then we have this whole line that should be grouped with assets. So again, this is selected, clicking assets, shift A, and it will be grouped. And you see the space between assets and Bitcoin is quite large. So I'm gonna increase that by, I'm gonna put 24. And I think that's fairly, yeah, right. All right. Um, now I have the other um, rows that needs to be done. Where is my picture? Uh, actually, I'll remove that just to see. So I have widget activity um, as well. So what I'm going to do is select the group that I just created regarding the assets and copy it again by pressing Option and dragging. And then I'm going to press Command. Um, no, I'm going to stay with that first. And then I'm just going to replace the text, starting with re replacing the text first. So I'm going to double click and just replace the text widget. Um, and then I'm going to type add widget. Uh, and then I'm going to remove what I don't need. So I'm going to remove VTC because I don't need it. Um, and also, I know that I have some extra stuff here. So I'm going to go in my layers panel and I'm going to just over my mouse and it will tell me, okay, so this frame here has, I can't remove it just like that. All right. And then, um, is it with an S or no S? Okay, no S. All right, okay, and then I need to add the icons um, just here, the plus and the little chart I will do. So for the plus, I'm gonna choose the plus icon that I have here again. Um, and I'm gonna adjust basically the color of it. So I'm gonna select the stroke of my icon and I'm going to choose the color which I had on my picture. I mean, I'll go there and it will be the same. Um, I'm just going to zoom in to make it easier for me. Then I'll select this. And then the plus should be, yeah, it appears. Um, I'm just going to copy the color code here to, because I will use it actually for make it a, a a green circle that goes um, into this plus. So I'm going to click fill and then it will fill it with white, obviously by default. And then I'm going to copy paste the color of the stroke that I have here in here. Now it's all one color, but I'm just going to change the opacity to like 30% of the fill. And then I should have a little bit something like this. And now, of course, it's a full circle, so the radius needs to be changed. So I'm going to change it something to 50, and it should create a circle. Now, um, the plus is quite big. Um, so I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to select the vectors that make the plus. And by pressing K, I'm and shift option, it will change the plus, it will scale the plus like this. And then I'm gonna add the plus inside my frame here. Now, of course, it's not at the right place, so I'm just gonna drag it and see where I can probably here and then I can remove that and like that 
Now the plus of the widget is quite big, so I'm just gonna select the icon and I'm gonna press K again. Uh, and I'm gonna resize this to 24. I think it should be fair. You know, I just noticed that if you click yeah. this inspect on any one of these assets, it'll give you the CSS code and all this other stuff. Yeah. I just barely noticed that. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So you're probably expecting the version that I already done, and that way you have it. But if you're copying from an image, it, it won't be able to tell you that, obviously. Yeah. It, it, so this big much is basically, I guess it does all that in the back end, just like as far as creating CSS. Yeah. And yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it gives it automatically. All right, and once I, now I have the widget arrow, uh, sorry, the rigid widget row, <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the activity row. So I'm just gonna press option, drag to copy, um, change the text, which is activity, uh, what's the other one, no activity yet. No activity yet and now you see um, there's another copy just below it receive some funds so what I'm gonna do is select the no activity um, text um, oop, just here and then command C command V now you see it appears like next to it so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna select no activity, both no activity yet, make a frame, and I'm gonna change the direction of the frame so it's a vertical direction, so they're one below the other. For this one, I can remove it, I don't need it, like that. And then I'm gonna change the font size of this thing, um, obviously, so, and the size of this seems to be quite similar to this one below. So what I'm gonna do is um, click on store your money, click, tap on my keyboard option, command C, and that it will copy the style, and option, command V, and I have the style already copied here. And I'm gonna type, um, receive some funds to get started. Receive some funds to get started. All right, now you see there's a little bit like too much space between these two, so I'm just gonna select the frame, put to zero, that should be good. And now we need to do the little like chart um, icon here. So I didn't find an icon that had it, that chart, so I'm gonna recreate it based on the image that we have here. I'm just gonna remove my... And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna zoom in into my image and then press P to have the pen tool. And then I'm just gonna basically copy over it the lines. And once I'm done, I press enter. And now I can zoom in and adjust it to be a little bit more um, accurate. So this is a bit here, like that, like that. And as you can see in the, I mean, especially if you zoom out, in the original design, the corners are not that sharp. They're a little bit like rounded. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna, I wanna change the style of the stroke. So I'm gonna go in my stroke panel click um, advanced stroke and I'm gonna choose the round join here and it will round it. I'm just gonna adjust here again. All right. And, whoop. and then uh, I want of course to be yellow so I'm gonna select my, um, my chart icon, um, click grab a yellow that there is and also I wanted these um, edges of the stroke to be round. So I'm gonna go again into advanced stroke settings. Um, oh no, actually I'm gonna go here and then change the round, the end of the stroke to be round. All right, 
Um, now I need to make the circle um, that is like uh, around it. So what I can do is, um, um, actually I'm gonna press O and pressing shift option, starting a circle from the center. And the other icon was 24 pixels. So I'm gonna make a circle of 24 pixel. And then I'm gonna change the color of the circle to be yellow as well. And I'm gonna change the opacity to be 30% by just pressing three. And then I'm gonna bring my little um, chart icon and put it in the center. So I can either like, let's say, let's say my circle is here. I can select these two together. And then if I go at the top here, I can horizontally center and then vertically center, it will do it automatically instead of me like position it. And then I wanna group them together. So I'm gonna do command group. And then I'm gonna go to replace it, um, to replace it here. We put it in the frame, dragging it. And here we go. Now we need the spacing of these things to be some sort of equal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select them all, do shift A, and I'm gonna adjust the spacing between them to be at 32. Seems about right. And that's it. Now we're, okay, I see it's 145. So it's like the, the home screen is almost done, but there's some other last thing that I want to show you guys um, regarding prototyping. And um, so let's say we did like all this and now we're at the part where we want to have like the scroll and um, the fact that the send receive rests in place. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna finish um, this one here. So I'm just gonna change the picture, um, uh, the fill to be an image. Uh, so I click fill and go to select a min an image and then I'll just go to select the image here, uh, like that. And then as you can see, um, when I show you guys at the beginning of the prototype, this was staying at uh, the top. So the way to do it, um, these things are not in a frame currently. So what I'm, uh, what I'm gonna do is press F and type, um, drag a frame here. And that frame I'm gonna call it like nav bar, let's say. Okay, and I wanna make sure that my icon users are and gear are within that frame and that the writing and the um, pictures are in this frame, and they are. And now <coughs> I'm gonna change the color of this frame um, to be uh, black, basically. So I want this frame to have a fill, basically. So when it scrolls, um, you don't see uh, behind it. So I'm because right now, yeah. So I'm gonna click uh, fill here. It changes to white. We just want it to black, so we're just gonna put it on the bottom left corner. And now um, if I, and then in order for this thing to stay at the top when it scrolls, I'm gonna go into the constraint here and I'm gonna click fix position when scrolling. And then, and you'll see on your layers panel, what is fixed, it will stay here. And what it scrolls, it will be all the rest. All right. Now from the example that I gave you guys, um, if you copied everything, you had this uh, send and receive um, um, buttons that are already created. So you can take those and we're just gonna put them like over um, our frame here. So one thing that you might notice that it can be like a little bit hard sometimes, especially if you go with the cursor, <coughs> it will wanna go into the frame automatically. In order to avoid that, you can just select the assets like group that you created and just go on your layers panel and lock it. That way it won't cause the buggy thing um, of uh, going inside the frame automatically. 
Sorry, I just need to drink water one minute. <laughs> And then, um, yes. And one thing you notice, like when you are using the app, is that um, it stays at the below here, right? And um, so usually the height of the screen is um, 568. So in order to know how where to position it correctly, I just bring my rulers back. So Shift R drag a ruler from the top, and then just position it at like um, 568. So I know my screen like will stop there. And I know then I can place my send receive button um, just a bit above it, like that. And now, in order to make the page scroll, I just need to let the frame of my screen um, long like this. <coughs> Sorry. And then I'll bring, uh, by pressing command um, over the cursor, I just close it a little bit. And then if I show the prototype, um, you can put, like, I'm just going to remove this, but uh, you can adjust to have, like, a phone in your prototype. So if I click Show Prototype Settings, I can select um, the phone model that I have. So since this is a frame uh, iPhone SC, I can choose, like, a space gray model, and it will change uh, my phone. And you can change also the background, the color of the background. So it could be red if you want it something like that for a presentation or something. Usually black, I mean, works. And then you click um, present just here. And now it should it should work. Um, so the send and receive button should stay where they are. Oh, no, they won't because I didn't um, fix the position. <laughs> so uh, just go back into design, click the send receive. Again, click here, fix position when scrolling in the constraint panel. Just refresh your prototype. Um, oh, why I have this? Um, it's because I have a random frame somewhere, I think. I'm just going to select again, present again. All right, and then if I scroll, you see send receive stay here, but oh, yeah. and it's hidden. And then the horizontal scrolling that we did like earlier is here. Cool. Yeah, you can of course do way more advanced thing yeah, in yeah. prototype, but it's sort of nice. It's kind of, kind of like we, we didn't like I didn't know any of this stuff, and then now like seeing it. Yeah. And also one thing that is cool is like um, you can see on your phone the prototype. So if you download like the Figma app, you can see the prototype on your phone. And that's a good way to know that, um, <coughs> that it's the right size, the font size are, are nice and um, all that. So I'm just going to show you guys on my phone so you have an idea. Oh, so like, just look out of it, and you have it so it can go right there. That's what it's look out of there. 
I go like this. Oh, is this it? Yeah, so that's the Figma app on the phone, and you can see your prototype, basically. That's cool. If you go right to that. Yeah. Sometimes it might be a bit buggy depending on the Wi-Fi you have, but... Wow. Mine didn't come out nearly as good, but uh, it's <laughs> kind of cool to see it all come together relatively fast. It didn't even take us that long. No. How do I enable the horizontal scroll? Yes, so you click on, yeah, you want to reduce your frame to be on the edge, so you're going to press Command, and with your mouse, you're going to close. Um, just go on the, completely on the right side, not on the corner. Okay. Oh, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to press Command, though, because it's going to reduce everything. And no. We do it. Uh, Command Z to go back remove what you've done. Do you want me to stop it right there? Yeah. yeah, I think okay. it will be good. Unless you guys have questions or you want to keep it in the recording. Um, yeah. I think we're good. Well, thank you again for, for doing this at Pub Lab. And uh, I think this is like the course that I would watch, right? Well, I understand how to do this, so thank you again. Well, thank you guys. <laughs>